Hey everybody, Jay Super Awesome here. I'd like to welcome you all to week number 33 of the Horror Man Slashback Saturday Challenge. This week's slasher movie theme is 80 Slashers, and I will be giving my review for Nail Gun Massacre. It's cheaper than a chainsaw. Okay, so getting into the plot for this one. No pennies, no plot, no problem. With innovation comes influence. And so, it was that, in 1985, another group of backwoods filmmakers from the Long Star State gave us another legendary Texas set splatter shocker, Nail Gun Massacre, an icon of the VHS age, sleazier and cheesier than any of its contemporaries, and featuring more power tool plasma spillage than you can shake a chainsaw at. Nailgun Masker introduces a motorcycle helmet-wearing psychopath with a range of amusing one-liners. This mysterious marauder gets their kicks from tracking down tempestuous teenagers and lowbrow locals so that they can be turned into human pincushions. The motivation behind this macabre path of plasma provocation may be linked to a psychosexual crime that took place years prior. Although the local police force are understandably baffled as each new dead body turns up, it's a very penetrating story. Okay, so getting into my thoughts for this one. With this week's Slashback Challenge theme of 80 Slashers, I had plenty of 80 Slasher movies in my collection to choose from. But ultimately, I decided to go with Nail Gun Massacre because it's one that I have never seen before. And that is something that I have always been thankful about for this challenge. It gives me the opportunity to have the motivation to pull off a movie from my shelf that I have never watched and give a new movie a try. So this week, I'm happy to be giving my review for Nail Gun Massacre. Nail Gun Massacre is basically a rape revenge story, and I do know that that is a touchy subject, and rightfully so. Those are hard scenes for me to watch. It is the opening sequence of this movie. It doesn't really focus on it a whole lot, and you really don't get to see a whole lot. You do see a man forcing himself onto a woman while a crowd of other men have gathered around. We do learn that this woman was gang raped by some construction workers. I was pretty happy that the movie picked up pretty quickly from this sequence. I found it really interesting that the plot description on the back describes the murders start to take place years after this incident. But from what I recall from watching the movie, the murder started taking place six months after this incident. So I found that really interesting. It's not really anything I'm going to nitpick, but it was something that I was noticing when I was reading the plot description on the back of the Blu-ray. Overall, I had a lot of fun watching Nail Gun Massacre. It's a very cheesy and very sleazy 80s slasher film. It's not necessarily a good movie. It's actually a pretty bad movie, but I had a fun time watching it. Maybe you could put it in a so bad it's good category, or if there is a so bad it's awesome category. It's not really a good movie, but I had a fun time watching it, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the cast of characters we have in Nail Gun Massacre. So basically, we have a slasher movie that is mixed with a crime investigation story. The main character of the movie is more or less the local sheriff of this small town who is investigating a series of murders that are taking place. And I do mean this is a small town because this sheriff's patrol car does not look like a normal police car. It looks like a normal car that any civilian would be driving. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for this guy's uniform, we wouldn't even know that he was the sheriff. But that's besides the point. Anyway, he has enlisted the help of the local doctor who does not look like a doctor either. Together they are investigating each and every crime scene and trying to put all the clues together to solve the mystery behind all the murders that are taking place in this small town. 
We have a lot of side throwaway characters. We basically have the carpenters who committed the rape act at the beginning of the movie. They're getting picked off one by one. And anybody that is with these people are all victims by association because they are all getting killed along with them. So we have a lot of throwaway characters in this movie. I would say the acting in this movie is probably a little below average for a normal slasher movie. But I don't really watch these movies for the acting and the storylines for the most part. I just kind of overlooked that kind of stuff. But the acting overall wasn't really that great. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the most important part of a slasher movie. That is the killer and the kills. So, the killer's pretty cool looking in this movie. The killer's wearing a black motorcycle helmet with some black duct tape over the visor. I thought that was a pretty interesting choice. The look is completed with a camouflage Carhartt. So, overall, a pretty cool look for the killer. And I thought it really worked in this movie. I thought it was really interesting that the physical appearance of the killer changed throughout the movie. You kind of had an idea who the killer might be. The physical appearance of the killer to begin would sort of look like a female, but then would change from scene to scene throughout the movie. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And I did learn through the special features on the Blu-ray that there is an interview, and I learned that there were different actors that played the killer throughout the movie, so that's why the appearance was changing. And it was probably also due to the fact that they was trying to set up some misdirection with who the killer was. It kind of worked. Another thing that I wanted to mention that I thought was unique about this killer is that this killer is loaded with one-liners, and it's all done through some really wacky vocal effects, which I feel like didn't really work for this movie, and it's really the thing about the movie that I didn't like the most. It just really felt like somebody had the vocal effect processors and... We're goofing around, making all these wacky noises, and decided to use it for the voice of the killer. And I can understand, they probably didn't want us knowing if the killer was male or female, but I just didn't really like the way they used it in this movie. And, of course, this killer has a weapon of choice, and, of course, it is the nail gun. And the tagline states that it's cheaper than a chainsaw, but... I would say that that tagline could be a little bit debatable considering you would have to spend a lot of money replacing the nails that you're using to shoot at your victims. That's just a thought. As far as the kills go, this movie has a pretty high body count. I am remembering 10 or more kills, which is a pretty high number for a 80 slasher film. As I had just mentioned, the killer's weapon of choice is the nail gun, so all the victims are being murdered with the nail gun, so a lot of the kills do seem a little repetitive. Overall, I did enjoy this movie in a so-bad-it's-good kind of way. It's going to be one that's going to be a little bit hard to recommend. I guess if you like cheesy and sleazy slasher films, you may enjoy this one. I'm going to give this one a 5.5 out of 10. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe below. Let me know if you have seen Nailgun Massacre. Be sure to check out Joe the Horror Man's channel. And I would like to thank you all for watching.